If I was a white woman, do you know what my name would be? Wealthy. Melissa McCarthy. Oh, my goodness. If I was a white woman, my <coughs> name would be Melissa McCarthy. Same track record. Five-year sitcom and syndication. Same track record. The opportunities are not the same. So when you have, and as you read all of those things off, when you say, wait a minute, Mo, none of them have this, none of them have that, mm. we get judged by a different stick. We get judged by a different stick. And then when I had people judging me, I'm like, you judging me by your yardstick. You've not done what I've done. And I say that humbly. You've not had the accomplishments that I had. Right. When I hear Brother D.L. Hubley say, well, that Netflix special, I just accepted anything. Whatever they gave me, these are not my words, they're his. Right. Well, that's how you do business. I'm not mad at you accepting anything. Right. Why are you mad at me saying I won't accept anything? Right. That's the difference. Mm -hmm. It's like people were judging me. I was hearing people, Shannon, okay? I didn't know we had so many tender people in our group. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know we had so many <laughs> tender love. <laughs> I didn't know we had so many tender people. And I, I wouldn't want to be on the front line with these tender people. We said, like, oh, I can't believe you said that. I can't. But is what I said the truth? Is what I said the truth? Mm -hmm. No, I didn't put no sugar on it. Right. It was shit. Right. And I didn't try to make it taste good. We got to stop running away from what is real. And we run into fantasy. And that's how come we keep staying where we sit. Mo, before you became Monique that everybody has seen over the last two, three decades, what were some of the jobs that you had that you like, man, this ain't for me. I, I mean, this is just a holdover. This is just a breeze. Every job I had, baby, it was special. Was it? Every job I had, baby. You were the best at it. Let me tell you something. I worked at the drive-thru in Popeye's. I worked in the drive-thru in Popeye's, and that was my microphone. Every time somebody came to that window, I was on stage. Welcome to Popeye's. My name is Monique. What would you like today? And they would say, hey, Monique, I'm Shannon. Hey, Shannon, how you doing, baby? What's your order? And you give me your order, and then I say, would you like a hot apple pie with that Shannon? You say, you know what, Monique, I sure would. Come on around here, baby. Let You're me see you. You're the Listen here, <laughs> Popeyes, where my damn money? Cause I was a seller, baby. I, if you wanted a two piece, I gave you four. Hmm. You wasn't gonna lose no weight coming through my damn window, Shannon. That's why I ain't lost no damn weight. What I sold, I ate. If you got two pieces, I ate two of them. Welcome to Popeyes. Hey, right, baby, come on now. So that was that was your microphone. That was that was the beginning of Monique because you was owning. Did you know that's what you were doing? What I knew I was doing was walking in my dream. The microphone said it's possible. When I stood in my bathroom mirror and I wrapped the towel around me and it didn't go all the way. <laughs> I wasn't devastated. Okay, I don't know if they just didn't have enough money to buy me a whole damn towel, but... But I would still stand and that was my gown. Right. And I would pick up that brush and I would say, I would like to thank. So I've always seen it. You, did you always know that you were, you are, was Oscar always in the back of your mind? Did you always? Oscar was never in my mind. You just wanted to be in TV? You wanted to be in show business? What, what aspect did you want to do? I wanted to be famous. I loved what it looked like with people being famous. I didn't know to say, I want to be wealthy with the fame. Right. I didn't know to be specific to ask for it, but I wanted to be famous. Who did you know that looked like Monique that was famous? Oprah Winfrey. So do you see how far this relationship goes? Mm -hmm. That's who I knew that looked like me. See, I didn't, when people always ask me about the Oscar, right? But no one ever asked me about the Image Award. No one ever said to me, what did it feel like when they called your name for the NAACP Image Award? And they were people that looked like me right. because we put so much weight on that award that we, it's such an honor. And it's an honor for any award. Right. Not just that one. But as a little girl, I never watched the Oscars because nobody looked like me. Was winning. It. So I was like, this is not for right. me, oh, but when I watched the Image Award, baby, those people look like me. Right. 
The BET Awards, those people look like me. Mm -hmm. So I was honored the first time they called my name for an Image Award. When I tell you, Shannon, that night, baby, when they <laughs> called this little fat girl name from Baltimore and the winner goes to, the award goes to, Monique, well, listen here. I got so good with them calling my name and this is what had to humble me. You will get humble, baby, when you just think they get ready to call your name. I had won it like three years in a row. This the fourth year. Uh oh. Hey, you're right. Yeah. Hey, you know, hey, yeah, hey, yeah, call yeah, my yeah. name again, JJ. <laughs> Let me situate myself in my See, chair. Hey, yeah, right? Do I look good? I'm so good. here come the category. Okay. <laughs> hey, baby. The best actress in a sitcom. They named me, Tisha Campbell, and I cannot remember the other sisters, right? I know they get ready to say, and the award goes to Monique. So I got to, because I'm a big girl, you got you to got, scoot up. Yeah, yeah. So you can be ready to push up, right? right? So I scoots up and get my gown together. And the winner is Tisha Campbell. I said, all right, girl, go on and get that. <laughs> that humbled my ass and sat right back down. But I, I, it, it was never the Oscar for me, baby. Right. It was never the Oscar for me. So how did stand-up happen? Stand-up happened on a dare. My brother came home one day and said he went down to uh, the comedy club okay. to do open mic night. Mm -hmm. And he did so bad. He said they was booing me, but I was six beers in, so I thought the booze was applause. So my boy had to say, man, nah, bro. this is stinking, right? What? So we cleaning out the pool. And he says, um, I said, if I was there, I would have said, and that was 30 minutes of what I would have said. Then he said, I dare you to go down next Wednesday and do open mic night. It was a club called Burks in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. I went down that next Wednesday, Shannon, and I got a standing ovation. And from that moment to this moment. Were you hooked? I was. I was. It is nothing like, and I'm sure you can appreciate it, understand when you walk out on that football field mm -hmm. and you walk and you smell it and you walking into it and you, that little boy in you says, I'm here. Mm -hmm. I'm still there. That little girl in me is still saying, I'm here, but I'm a grown woman. Right. And I'm saying now that I'm here, you got to pay for it fairly. If not, I'm good. I just have to walk away. How much how different is that Monique? Not just in age, yes. but how different is that Monique to the one that's sitting right here on this couch? Oh, she grew up. That she... one was naive. Were you ever naive? Yes. 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 When you first come to Hollywood, Shannon, and I got a show called The Parkers. After mm. I was in Hollywood, less than 90 days. <coughs> wow. Yeah. 90 days. And you have agents and you have managers and you have attorneys, right? And they're telling you all the good things. And anybody, everybody always said to me, you want to get the syndication. Yes. You want to get the syndication. Once you get the syndication, you work because you want to work. Right. Right. So syndication is what, five years, 100 episodes? Synd syndication is 100 episodes. Okay. Right? So that's all I knew. I didn't know to ask to be an executive producer of my own image. Oh, and nobody told go. me. I didn't know to ask for that. I didn't know to ask for after the third year of being on a successful sitcom that you could say, I now need a bonus. I didn't know to even negotiate that, and no one told me to negotiate that. They're definitely not going to tell you. All they kept saying is, when you get the syndication, when you get the syndication, when you get the syndication. Well, three years in, the Parkers was in syndication. Now, no one told me that. You learn it once you open your eyes, because now I'm going around the country doing promos. The Parkers is coming on at 4 o'clock in your city. The Parkers will be on at 2.30 in Sacramento. Y'all make sure y'all watch the Parkers. It's coming on. I'm not knowing. I'm promoting the show in syndication. No one told me that. All we're doing is saying if we get to five years, we got to five years. 110 episodes, me and a beautiful young lady named Countess Vaughn, who was my baby to this day. We had the Laverne and Shirley law, yeah. right? You're supposed to be equal. Yeah. Once we got to the five years, our attorney, my attorney, yeah. and the agents said, oh, the Parkers made money. Y'all going to get paid from the Parkers. It's made money. Okay. Years go by. 
by 2004, the Parkers, we went off the air in 2004, mm-hmm. right? In five years, by 2009, the Parkers had made $800 million. You're like, oh, yeah, yeah. Stay money, with me. Money. Money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, come money, on. Money, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Okay, okay. Because okay. 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 we're waiting to get yeah, this yeah, money yeah, standing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. Check, check, check is coming. coming. We get a call. We got to do an audit, you know, and everything. Okay. And that was in 2009 that it made $800 million. Okay. We're now in 2024. And they're trying to convince Countess Vaughn and I that that show made no money. No, no. Mm-mm. They're trying to convince us that a show that cost 65, roughly $65 million to make. In our last year of shooting the Parkers, Countess Vaughn and I made $55,000 a piece. That's it? How much were you making an episode? $55,000 an episode. Okay, so how many episodes did you shoot that last year? In five years. That last year, we shot 22 episodes. Okay. We made $55,000 a piece at the end of a top-rated sitcom. Hold on, hold on, hold on, time out, time out. Are you saying you made $55,000 for 22 episodes, or are you saying you made $55,000 per episode? Because I want to make sure I'm hearing you Let correctly. me make sure you hear me correctly. We did 22 episodes. Yes. We were paid $55,000 per episode okay. for 22 shows. Okay. Okay? Okay, yeah. That's on a hit show. Right. That is unheard of. Yeah. Because we're two black women. I, I don't know to fight for it. Right. Countess is young. Countess is a baby right. in this business. So I don't know to say that. We should be making 100,000, 150, 200,000 an episode. So now today, y'all want to convince us that that show made no money? That show has made over $2 billion. And I'm, I'm guesstimating. And you want to convince us. But our percentage, we made no money. We can't allow that to happen. Right. That's why we're fighting. That's why we're saying, no, no, guys, we can't sit on our hands like that. Right. You know how many of us, when you watch Good Times, when you watch the Jeffersons, mm-hmm. when you watch Sanford and Son, whose family is benefiting from our images? Because the damn show ain't ours. Wow. You see why I fight the way I fight? Yeah. Because if it does not make sense, you have to explain it. And I'll go back to Tyler Perry. You know why Tyler Perry don't want to talk to my husband? Because he can't talk around him. My husband don't care nothing about that man's money. We don't care nothing about your title. We care about your character, brother. We care about your integrity. And what you going to pay? What, what you, what you going to pay? How you going to make it right? How you going to make it right? Because if I am your Aunt Mary... And I really belong to you as I really belong to you right now, Shannon. I am your sister. Mm-hmm. And you heard something that was wrong. Yeah. How how can Tyler Perry make it right, Mo? Give you a job, give you a, uh, uh, your sit, give you a sitcom, say, Mo, okay, you know what, Mo? Sitcom, you're going to be the executive producer. I'm going to be a co-executive producer. You're going to do the sitcom. If somebody cost you, Shannon Sharp, millions of dollars. Yes. Do you want to be compensated for what they cost you for a lie? And a rumor? Yeah. So at that time, I was making roughly between two and three million dollars a year. Right. I sat in that for over 12, for over a decade, like 12 years. Right. You do the math. Over a lie that he admitted that he told. Not something I'm making up. Mm-hmm. You admitted that, brother. How do you make that right? You got, I'm sure you got lawyers. Have you uh, had a conversation? Well, what happens is when you take somebody at their word, Time, time, time. We don't need to go to no lawyers, Tyler. You know what you did. Just make it right. Right. And if he doesn't make it right, what will our community do? What will our community say? Because today it's me, tomorrow it's you. Then what? Yeah. We've got to hold him accountable. What did what 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 cat say? We've got to. You got to tell Tyler Perry. Come on now. You got to do it, Shannon. You got to tell him. You got to tell it. Mo, obviously, when you do when, when you do stand up, you go to a lot of different cities, a lot of different clubs. Yes, it's a lot of different promoters. Has everybody always been on the up and up with Monique, or did you try? Sometimes people try to take advantage. You're female. You're black. You're heavy. You're not gonna say that like Mister from Color Purple. No! 
<laughs> you're black. You're ugly. You're not going to do that, shit. But, you know, people try to take... People would, would try to take advantage of anyone. But seemingly like us, their team were willing to take more advantage of I've us. I've had to tell the promoters, call the police. Because either they're going to come get you or me. They tried to hold up on the money? Call the police. Because, and this was this was like $75. Can you imagine? $75, like, you know where we come from. Yeah. If somebody gets you for $25, that's a problem. Yeah, for sure. Imagine $25 million. Yeah. We've seen people lose their life for $25. For sure. Imagine somebody getting you for millions. <coughs> How are you supposed to feel? Would you let it go? Nah, hell no. Nah. Right. So when people say, Mo, just let it go. Yeah, but, but, it, but it's easy for people to say let it go when they haven't lost anything. Come on, baby. It's easy to say. Come on. But when you've lost, how do you, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, you know, hey, someone should just get over it. You should, you can't tell somebody how to grieve, how long to grieve, because you're not the one that's hurting. <laughs> they didn't do it to you. They didn't do it to you. Thank it you. was done. And and I will say this right now on your show. I still love y'all. We still love y'all. You love more, they make it make it right. My husband okay, say that again because but you I, love y'all more, y'all make it right. Yes, indeed. Okay, I fixed him a pound cake. <laughs> my, my husband would always say, Mama, we ain't calling nobody out. We're calling them up. And if we continue to call us up on our doings that are not right, we get better as a people. Like, we get better. Do you know why things were able to happen like they happened on The Color Purple? Why you hate? Oh, you talking about the rebate? You talking about... What I'm talking about the seventh one. Yeah. The one that just came out. Right. Right, and that the seventh edition? <coughs> It's like the musical with Fantasia and, and, and Taraji, right? Right, okay. right, right, yeah. right, right, right. That, that one with all our beautiful sisters. Yes. You know why they're able to treat us like they treat us? How are you handpicked and you audition? No, if you handpicked, you don't audition. I want you to say that again, Shannon, because people don't understand how deep this goes. When I watch my sister say it was an honor to be handpicked. Right. Then why ever would you audition? Yeah. And the moment, in my opinion, the moment she auditioned, they knew we got them. We can treat them any kind of way we want to treat them. We can do them any kind of way. But why would you want to? Why? Just because you can, that doesn't mean you should. But they did. But they did. How do you handpick me? And then mistreat me. Yes. And then I got to send a letter to you about the mistreatment that you gave me. That's why they're able to get away with it. That's why when I do interviews, oftentimes, or these conversations, people are too afraid to even address it. Because they don't want to be caught up like, oh, I don't I don't know. I, I, I. When you say, wait a minute, no, that's the truth. Right. I heard it. And I don't want my character to be on the line as I'm being a person sitting there asking people about their lives right. and then not be able to stand in what I've heard. Right. That's why it made so much of, uh, it was important for us. It was important for us to get you that audio. I don't want you to take my word. Yeah. And anything I've said on this couch right now, that don't take my word. Ask those people. Ask those people right. and see what happens. And then maybe after this come out, they, they're going to label me again. She's bitter. She's not loved. Yeah, yeah. You done stole, you done got 30, 40 million of my dollars. Yeah, I'm bitter. She, she, Mo, the average person gonna be bitter. Okay, I just want to look on your camera. Okay? And and here's the thing. Because I got a king at home, I'm not bitter. I'm not bitter. You just want what's right. We just determined. Right. Not life is too good to be bitter, but we're determined for you to take accountability. Right. That's all. When did Mo get a first big break in, 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 in comedy? Mm. The Apollo Theater. When and the you... sister that stay out front that had the jerry curl. Mm -hmm. If she liked you, everybody liked you. Right. If she did not like you, nobody liked you. And when I saw that woman stand to her feet, baby. Good. I was good. Um... There were so many moments. Shannon. Were you nervous to go on Apollo? Because, you know, it, you, you, everybody know about the Apollo. You're nervous every time. You still get nervous to go every on Apollo? Every time, baby. 
And not the nerves when you're scared. It's just that, like, oh, I get to do it again. Yeah. Like when you go out to the field, it's yeah. like, oh, it's that. Mm -hmm. I, I still get that, yeah. Wow. Want to join Club Shay Shay? Become an official member by hitting that subscribe button, where you never know who's going to be joining us for drinks and conversation. Don't be late to the party because you know we like to do something before two something.